rally on why stocks could be in for an impressive exit to 2014. In today's cover story, the investment firms attempting to shake up the entire industry. Plus, retailers rejoice as Americans bundle up and the traders unplugged why the guys are not impressed by companies overflowing with cash. First Business starts now. You're watching First Business. Financial news, analysis, and today's investment ideas. Good morning, everybody. I'm Angela Miles. It's Friday, November 21st. In our first look back on top, the Dow and S&P broke more records. It's the second record closing for the Dow and the third for the S&P 500. The Nasdaq shot up 25 points yesterday as Apple led the way in the tech sector. Gold was dinged a dollar and oil bounced $1.04. Gap cuts guidance ahead of the holidays. Gap warns all is not rosy at its stores and Hertz hires a new CEO. The troubled rental car company is appointing John Tag to take the wheel effective today. In Trader Talk this morning, Ira Epstein of the Lynn Group joins us. Good to have you back on our show. It's been a while, my friend. Thank you for having me. What do you make of the rally action that we had yesterday? It was an energetic rally with a lot of the energy stocks moving higher. Yeah, well, you know what it is, we're going into the end of the year. This is one of the strongest times of the year. You're getting past the earnings reports now, getting just the trailing ones. We're already hearing about Christmas sales. Comscore is predicting online sales to be up 17%. Now, think of what that does for FedEx, UPS, and all the other carriers, because if you buy online, they're going to ship it. So I'm looking for better economy there. The Fed's turned its attention a little bit away from labor now. It's more concerned about lack of inflation. And, of course, we've got cheap energy prices, which is doing what? It's putting money in everyone's pockets. What is your reaction to earnings season overall? It's been bullish. That's why the market's been making new highs. We've seen corporations doing well. I'm expecting a falter sometime at the end late part of the first quarter. We want to see the market uh, anticipate what the Christmas sales are for the retailers. But I think once you get into everything, the higher dollar might slow some of the large corporate earnings abroad down. So we have to watch that. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Snowy weather and frigid temperatures have top news headlines this week. Here to tell us how the weather picture is shaping up, Bernie Reno of AccuWeather. Good morning, and Bernie, so much to get to. I'm hearing that fans of the Buffalo Bills are out there shoveling the stadium, and I'm very concerned about Thanksgiving travelers who may be hitting the road this weekend. Yeah, and that, that game is not going to be played in Buffalo on Sunday. They're going to have to move that. Here's some good news. The heaviest lake effect snow that's been going on south of Buffalo is now over. We're going to warm things up across uh, a lot of the country as we head toward the weekend. The price for the warmth is going to be a soaking rain from Texas Saturday, Sunday into the Midwest, and then Monday along the East Coast. Uh, but at least it is going to be warm. In fact, temperatures on Monday, get ready for this. Washington, D.C. will probably get into the lower 70s. We're looking at 60s in Philadelphia and New York City. Enjoy it because winter returns uh, uh, late next week, just in time for Thanksgiving. And we may have to worry about a storm along uh, uh, from the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. Thank you for that update, Bernie. My pleasure. Chuck Coppola joins me now with more on climate change. Good morning. Angie, wild weather is also on the government's radar. A new report predicts harsh weather could cost Americans billions in insurance claims in the future. The Government Accountability Office says climate change will contribute to a rise of floods and crop damage, increasing insurance losses. The report says losses could be substantially increased by 2040 and 50 to 100 percent higher by the year 2100. Delays at West Coast shipping ports are clouding retailers' Christmas forecasts. Perry Ellis is the latest retailer hit by shipping snafus. And Taylor stores are also waiting longer than normal for imports. Ports in Los Angeles and Long Beach, California, take in the bulk of imports coming from Asia. Labor and equipment issues are slowing shipments just as retailers want to be well stocked for the holidays. Best Buy and Dollar Tree are already benefiting from the holidays. Third quarter net income for Best Buy more than doubled, beating expectations. Best Buy shares jumped 7% to close at $38. Dollar Tree reported the best sales figure since 2011. At income in the discount retailer top forecasts, the company boosted full year sales expectations. Shares rallied more than 5% to close at $65.87. 
backlash is building over stores open for shopping on Thanksgiving. A boycott Black Thursday page on Facebook now has more than 100,000 followers pledging not to shop on the holiday. A survey by the National Retail Federation finds only 11% of Americans intend to shop on Thanksgiving. That equates to roughly 140 million people. 61% say they are likely to shop between Thanksgiving and Sunday. President Obama goes it alone on immigration after six years of battling with Congress. Last night, the president revealed his sweeping plan to secure the border, stop the deportation of 4.1 million law-abiding undocumented family members of U.S. citizens, plus allow foreign grads to continue working in the tech field. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president, the same kinds of actions taken by Democratic and Republican presidents before me. The action will be finalized today at a rally in Las Vegas. Republicans call the president's bold move a serious mistake. An emotional hearing on Capitol Hill as a young woman from Florida testified before the Senate Commerce Committee about a Takata airbag that exploded during a car crash. And the tip of the shrapnel had embedded in my right sinus. Since that day, I have endured multiple surgeries and therapies. I have more to go still. My vision will never be the same. I will never be the same. Senator Nelson of Florida demonstrated how gas that fills the airbag can cause an explosion. The faulty Takata airbags are in more than 14 million older model vehicles, affecting almost every car company. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration urgently wants a nationwide recall. However, the senior vice president of Takata sees only the need for recalls in areas of high humidity. He offered this apology. We are deeply sorry about each of the reported instances in which a Takara airbag has not performed as designed and the driver or passenger has suffered personal injuries or deaths. Executives from Honda and Chrysler were also questioned at the hearing. In Arizona, the state is taking legal action against General Motors for GM's recall of cars with faulty ignition switches. The state's attorney general is suing the automaker for $3 billion, claiming that it sold unsafe vehicles to consumers. Arizona's AG says owners of recalled cars should be compensated for the lost value. GM spokesman says we intend to vigorously defend ourselves. A shuttle scuttle in Silicon Valley is ending with Facebook's bus drivers joining the Teamsters Union. The drivers work for Loop Transportation and bus around the Facebook staff in San Francisco. Drivers voted to join the union due to low wages, long hours, and split shifts, while their passengers were getting richer. Drivers reportedly earned between $18 to $25 per hour. There's no word from Facebook. Safety regulators are out with poor ratings on minivans. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety gave poor marks to 2015 models of the Nissan Quest, Chrysler Town & Country, and Dodge Grand Caravan. Nissan says it will review these and other results from IIHS testing. In our IPO watch this morning, NEF is the largest company debuting today. The equipment rental company shares are expected to price around $20 to $22 and trade under the ticker symbol NEF. Also today, Adama Agricultural Solutions could price between $16 and $18 per share, trading under symbol Adam. And Peak Resorts is projected to trade around $9 to $11 under the symbol Skis. The only IPO slated for December is drug company Histogenics on December 3rd at $13 to $15 per share, trading under HSGX. In our cover story, trying to change the overwhelmingly white and mostly male leadership positions in this country's financial services sector. There are more recruiting efforts now to bring African Americans and Latinos into wealth management firms. A few candidates rise beyond mid-level and many leave altogether mid-career. Retention is a big problem that a gathering in Chicago learned needs to be fixed so firms can recruit, retain, and repeat. Representatives from more than a dozen financial institutions gathered at Chicago's Federal Reserve Bank say relatively few Latinos and African Americans choose careers in wealth management. But what's worse, those who do soon leave. Why are they leaving? Well, we're not sure yet. And that's the second phase of the research that we're conducting. Only 2.8% of senior leadership in financial services firms are African American. And just 3% are Latino, considerably lower than their respective size within the U.S. population. 12% African American, 17% Latino. There isn't the same expectation that we have the ability to deliver the same service. And that's a problem. And we see it all the time. 
John Rogers Jr., who founded Ariel Investments more than 30 years ago and now manages $9 billion in assets, says firms keeping recruited minorities long enough to gain leadership positions would spread the wealth management needs to a larger group and perhaps address other social problems. If you get more wealth created, then everyone those become potential customers. So if you have uh, the next generation of people of color who become a partner at a hedge fund or a private equity firm, well, they, then they become the folks hiring investment bankers and law firms and other professional services firms because they have the wealth to do so. And they'll be on all the boards helping to make the city and the community stronger. Those industries where wealth is generated are where you start to see these huge gaps in representation of minorities. And there are fewer minorities in financial services than there are women in the field. You'll hear the sexist comments. You know, you'll hear you know, people saying, oh, you know, you know, we can't hire these women for these kind of positions because you know, they're going you know, to get married, they're going to have a family, they're not going to be there. That's not fair. You hear that today? Oh, I see. I've, I've heard those conversations happen. Some urgency is added to recruitment and retention of minorities in financial services, largely because their numbers have been completely stagnant for the last five years and show no signs of improvement otherwise for the next five years. After crunching the numbers, Corinthian Colleges is selling the majority of its campuses. The school is letting go of 56 campus sites for $24 million. The sell-off to a student loan guarantee agency is part of a settlement with the government. The school is accused of failing to get students hired. Corinthian stock traded last at 11 cents and will soon likely end its days at the NASDAQ. Two big names in private lending are throwing students a financial lifeline. Wells Fargo and Discover are relaxing some terms on student loans. Wells Fargo is lowering interest rates this month and in February will extend repayment periods. Discover plans to forgive debt for some struggling borrowers and says it may consider lowering its interest rates. The number of Americans getting unemployment checks is now at the lowest level in 14 years. In some cases, it's because the time allotment to receive unemployment benefits ran out. But as corporations continue to hire, the Harvard Business Review is sticking by its projection that unemployment will drop to 5% or lower next year. On the earnings calendar for this Friday, it's Ann Inc. and Foot Locker. Still to come, the impressive turnaround stock move in the tech sector that caught some traders off guard. Plus, how much clout do mega-rich companies carry? That's up for debate in Traders Unplugged. Plus, a superstar entrepreneur explains why Americans should shed their stock market fears. That's next with Bill Mahler. Tony Robbins is a master motivator. If you've ever been to his professional development events, seen him on TV, read his books, if you're a CEO or a star athlete who's been coached by him, you know he has this irrepressible drive to get people to kind of break through self-imposed barriers and transform their lives. Well, this best-selling author has authored a new book, Money, Master the Game. It's been endorsed by several important influential people, including Steve Forbes, who says it's a book that is a gold mine of money making information. Good to have you, Mr. Robbins. Thanks. Thanks to be on, Bill. Mr. Robbins, I want to say Tony. Please you're, say you're so Tony. <laughs> uh, number one on Amazon. It's only been out a few days. Congratulations yes, thank on you that. Thank you very much. Let me ask you about this. In wealth and success, which you're an expert at, is it in fact a barrier that holds most people back? What is it about us that we're not? Is it the wrong information, the wrong attitude? I think it's complexity. You know, most people have a day job, you know, and a day job has many areas. You're trying to be a great parent, a great business person, great everything, and then I'm supposed to tackle this area called investment. And it, the industry makes it so complex, the language, everything, because the more complex, the more likely you just yeah. give me your money and then I can charge you fees you don't understand. So what I decided was in 2008, when I saw so many people suffering, I grew up very poor. I mean, car disappeared and it wasn't because somebody stole it, it was repossessed. I have parents. I mean, you yes. had a lot of No money, challenges. no food. So. When 2008 happened and people were losing their homes in mass and you were seeing people losing half their wealth and I knew it was because the system was manipulated, it made me crazy angry and I, I want to do something. So most people don't know it, but I've been working with one of the top 10 financial traders in the world for 21 years, Paul Tudor Jones. And Paul has not lost money in 21 years. And I'm 
monitoring every day what he does for two and a half decades. So I was there in the middle of the tech crisis in 2000, the crash, 9-11, 2008. He made 28% yeah. upside Jeez. in 2008. So I said, if I interviewed him and 50 of the smartest people on the planet, self-made billionaires, Nobel laureates, and I could simplify it so I could teach any investor what to do, it'd be a worthwhile venture. All right, so it says seven four years. simple steps to financial freedom. I always get suspicious when I see that because life isn't simple. There's yes. a lot of heavy lifting. There's a lot of setback and doubt yes. and fear and yes. failure. Yes. Is it simple, though, really? to become financially free? It, it is simple. Einstein said, make things as simple as they could be, but not simpler. And so, you know, the first thing that most people don't do, they don't, just don't get in the game. They don't get started. They own an Apple phone, but they don't own Apple. It's just crazy. We're not owners in the society. We're consumers. So I show people really what that means and how a small amount of change can change all that. As an example, you know, most people understand compounding. But when you ask Warren Buffett, what made you wealthy? He says, living in America where the opportunity was, living a long age because I had good genes and compound interest. There's a UPS driver named Theodore Johnson. Started out with, never made more than 14000 a year, and at 70 is worth $70 million. He just applied some of these simple principles. Money mastered the game. Thank you very much. Tony Thanks Rogers. for having me on. Coming up, anti up. Is the chip business making a comeback? And in Traders Unplugged, will the guys go gaga for Baba ahead of the holidays? Stay with us. A couple of guys with two very different views are good to go this week for Traders Unplugged. Alan Nuckman and Scott Chelity are ready to let loose. Here's round number one, guys. Soft surge. Microsoft has surpassed Exxon as the second most valuable company in the world. What does that tell you about the stock market? What this tells me is that the markets are getting ready to really rally once oil comes back and we see Exxon, which is a high dollar stock, it's in the Dow obviously, it's down 7% year to date. If it comes back to unchanged, Boom, catalyst for the markets one more time. It means absolutely nothing. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to the markets about the size of a company. I understand that Apple and Microsoft will be one and two and the next one will be three, but that doesn't mean it, it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Now you should go back hundred years and see who the top companies were and what they were doing in the economy. So to try to read what 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 that means for the economy by who are the biggest companies. No, because they pass, they flip flop in this last oh, no. this last no, resurgence because you... Exxon did not come back yet. When it does Boom, we're off to the races again. Because, folks, nothing ever goes down. Round number two, too big to mail. The Alibaba Singles Day may have overwhelmed the delivery system to ship those goods. Is Baba a buy ahead of the U.S. holidays? I think Alibaba was really the bellwether, and I think that we should take that for what it's worth, and I think that that should make more investors nervous, not really piling into that stock going higher. Now, having said that, we're going to levitate to go higher, but it's just because of central bank intervention. It's not because companies are doing well. So the caveat is going to be central bank intervention, stocks levitate to go higher, but that doesn't mean anything about what the stocks are actually doing. The stock has pulled back 5%, so that may be a buy opportunity. 130 is the next target. That's about 20% higher than we are now. They, in 2020, are going to have a larger e-commerce footprint. Sell opportunity? No, I'm, I'm just a larger footprint than the U.S., Britain, Germany, Japan, and France combined. Okay. So there's revenue. Route number three, Hedgehog, a trader recently executed a massive option strategy called a collar to protect $9 billion into next year. Is this a sell signal? That's the difference between a novice and professional trader. A professional trader focuses on risk. The s and is up 10%, so he wanted to lock in some gains. Sold, sold some calls up above to pay for some puts so he can sleep easy, sleep easy, easy until February, knowing that the position is completely hedged in case the market does not enjoy itself for the next few months. Though that, that trade takes place every day, maybe not in that size. Well, that's why so it was a big deal. What's nice is that after a big move, you can put this on and sleep better at night knowing that you've controlled but, your Aaron, risk. Why would you do that if the market's always going up? Why? Because just <laughs> so in case. And to the bonus round question for today, what retail stock is the best performer around Black Friday? Is it Gap, Coach, or Sears? Sears. That doesn't make any sense, but you have to say Sears. The answer is Coach. Oh. Coach. Montgomery, yeah. Montgomery Ward, Sears, and JC Penny. Right. You get the catalogs and you pick out your toys right. that way. Thank you guys for that memory Sears. lane. First business continues right after this. Traders will be paying close attention to Intel shares today. Joining me now is Dan Deming of Equity Armor Investments. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Angie. Intel, I think, caught some traders by surprise after talking about better than expected PC sales next year. 
Sure did. I mean, yesterday you saw a huge jump in Intel going to new all-time highs, and with that dragging up the chip sector as a whole, you look at the SMH, which is an ETF made up of many of those large chip makers, you saw that go to new all-time highs as well. So a big jump in both the semiconductor sector and Intel. Do you think that Intel will push higher from here? Well, it feels like that you know that sector now is making a new leg higher. You look at the Nasdaq as well. You see the Nasdaq break the new highs. It's just a smidge off of its all-time highs. If we see another breakout here in the next week or so uh, to new all-time highs in the in the in the tech sector as a whole, when you look at the Nasdaq, certainly that could be the catalyst to push all these other areas, this SMH and like you talked about, Hewlett Packard, Intel, higher uh, into the uh, you know into the December cycle. Nice way to end the show. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Angie. That's it for this week. Coming up on Monday, Mini Bar Madness. The entrepreneur is taking small hotel bars on the road. Thank you for watching today. From all of us at First Business, have a great Friday.